silent treatment or disengagement. I am often asked how somebody is able to distinguish between being subjected to a silent treatment or whether they have been disengaged from, discarded in old money. There are clear similarities between the two, and of course both are instances whereby we are asserting control over you. These behaviours are common in respect of the narcissistic dynamic between the narcissist and the intimate partner primary source and the intimate partner secondary source. It is, however, most common with regard to the intimate partner primary source and the narcissist because that is the appliance that we disengage from more commonly, more often. Silent treatments come essentially in two forms. There is the present silent treatment, PST, and the absent silent treatment, AST. The PST manifests through us standing and glaring at you but not saying anything, or walking away from you every time you come near us, say we go to a different room, or sometimes we just sit in a chair and watch television acting as if you are not there, even though we may speak to other people. Whilst the PST is unpleasant to the recipient, it is a manifestation of cold fury and is there to assert control. The PST is used by all three schools of narcissists, but is heavily used by the mid-rangers as part of their passive-aggressive repertoire. The advantage to the narcissist of the PST is that it can be deployed with very little effort, thus conserving energy, and also because you are either in the same room as us or nearby, we gain significant proximate fuel from your upset, anger and irritation as we assert control over you. Generally speaking, a PST's duration is almost always less than that of an AST. This is because your response enables us to assert control quickly, meaning that we don't have to continue with it, and also the fuel that is drawn from you is so proximate and copious that any wounding that may have been caused by you will be addressed sooner. Accordingly, the PST might only last, say, half an hour, or, at most, until the next morning, after you have endured a night in bed alone as we slept in the spare room or on the settee. Occasionally, it might extend to a couple of days of us not speaking to you in and around the house, but it is unusual for it to last any longer than that. The relatively short duration of the PST and the very fact that we are in the same room as you or the same building means that it is clear that it is a silent treatment and therefore there can be no disengagement. Indeed, the PST will not even be the precursor to disengagement. The PST has one function and one function alone, to control you by and drawing fuel from you at the same time, and it is very effective in that respect. What about the absent silent treatment? This occurs when we disappear and you do not know where we have gone. We might head to a local bar for the night, buck into a hotel, stay at a friend's house, leave town, return to our own property, or head to the place where the intimate partner secondary source that we are cultivating is living or currently placed. The key components of an absent silent treatment are as follows. 1. We are not physically proximate to you. 2. You don't know where we've gone. 3. You are desperate to find us, be that because you are worried, upset, concerned or angry. And 4. You will try to contact us. The absent silent treatment allows us to draw two types of fuel initially. The first is proximate fuel. Although we are not physically present, we receive anxious voicemail messages from you, angry text messages, demanding to know where the hell we are. Mutual friends might get in touch explaining how you have contacted them, worried sick as to where we are. And or we see you stood on our doorstep, banging on our front door as we watch from behind the curtains. So we draw proximate fuel at witnessing your emotional reaction. Secondly, knowing that we have left you in a state of anxiety or annoyance provides us with thought fuel. Even if we don't answer the phone, pick up the text message or voicemails, the fact that we see you are calling provides us with thought fuel. The fact that we know that you'll be worried about us provides us with thought fuel. 
This thought fuel, though, is ephemeral and doesn't last long. However, the absent silent treatment is a low-energy, highly effective method of gaining fuel from you, and again, by utilising the third assertion of control, we also assert control over you. The fact that you are pacing up and down concerned as to where we have gone, that you'll be ringing around friends and relatives trying to track us down, and that you're alternating between anger and upset, causes us to feel powerful through the provision of fuel, either proximate and or thought. There is, however, a third fuel aspect to the absent silent treatment as well. Often, the reason we opt for an absent silent treatment and not a present silent treatment is because we use the time away from you to either spend time with a non-intimate secondary source, our friends and family quite possibly smearing you at the same time, and thus we gain fuel from them as we control them and you through the smearing, but more often we also use it to cultivate the intimate partner secondary source that we are currently engaged with, and this enables us to assert control over them and draw fuel from them whilst you are being subjected to the AST. The attention from this person or these people gives us additional fuel. We are therefore edified by this triple supply of fuel. No wonder our narcissism offers or selects the absent time treatment so often. We assert control, we gain fuel, and it allows us to progress the seduction of a new prospective primary source. How long might an absent silent treatment last? It could be an afternoon, it might be a month, it might be three months. However, as the time period lengthens, this is when people begin to wonder if they have been actually disengaged from. The question arises, when is this behaviour no longer a silent treatment, and when does it become a disengagement? Would it be a disengagement after one day, one week, one month, three months, six months? The answer is that you may have absent silent treatments which last those periods of time and an absence of just one day may well be the start of the disengagement. If we are drawing proximate fuel from you, then it remains a silent treatment. Remember, thought fuel is ephemeral and does not last long, so we need the proximate fuel which means we need you to keep knocking at our door, ringing our telephone, emailing us, messaging us. Of course, since we are not engaging with you, how on earth do you know that we're still drawing fuel from you, and therefore, how is it not a disengagement? You could be calling us, and it's actually disengagement. So then, how could you tell the difference? As you know, we often don't tell you that the former relationship is over. We just disengage without telling you. If you are trying to get in touch with us and you find that you have been blocked from our mobile number, we have blocked you on social media, and none of our friends can shed any light on where we are, or indeed they say we've been told that you're not to contact him, or she has said that we're not to pass any details because they don't want to have anything more to do with you, then this is the indicator or indicators that this is not a silent treatment, but you have been disengaged from. During a silent treatment, we assert a certain control over you, but we also want to gain fuel from you. And therefore, the avenues of communication are kept open, but we don't respond. Our number rings. You might see that we've read your messages. Your emails go through. Accordingly, we let you text, ring, drop notes round, send messages through friends and knock at our door. All of this provides us with proximate fuel. If you've been disengaged from, not only are we asserting control over you, but we actually don't want any fuel from you. Indeed, at that point, you might not actually be providing it. And the reason we don't need anything more from you is because we are acquiring fuel, character traits and residual benefits elsewhere. It might be that we have switched to a new primary source. They've been embedded. It might be that we are engaging with a different secondary source and we have disengaged you. Accordingly, we have no need of you. The disengagement asserts control over you. That aspect of the prime aims has been catered for. Do we need fuel from you? No, we're getting it elsewhere. 
Do we need character traits from you? No. Of course, we can still use your character traits if we, choose, if we so choose, even though we have disengaged from you. But more usually, we'll be obtaining them from your replacement or somebody else. And finally, do we need residual benefits from you? No. We'll be getting them from somewhere else also. If you turn up at our door, you may be ignored, but more likely you'll be confronted because we can draw fuel and you will be told in no uncertain terms, go away and leave us alone. You'll be threatened with the police and restraining orders or members of our coterie will turn up to warn you off. We don't want or need your fuel anymore and we don't want you hanging around like a bad smell and posing a risk to our harmonious new relationship with the new primary source. Accordingly, a chief determinant between a silent treatment and a disengagement is whether you can contact us albeit not actually get a response. If you can contact us, then it is a silent treatment. And if it isn't, it's a disengagement. There will be occasions where the absence starts as a silent treatment and then becomes disengagement. This is where we have doled out a silent treatment to control you, obtain fuel and bed in the person we are seducing, and then that seduction has been deemed to be successful. Thus, we install them as the primary source you are then disengaged from, and it is that point we block you. The silent treatment shifts to become a disengagement through the period of absence. A further way also of determining whether this period of absence is a silent treatment or a disengagement is to consider what has happened in the run-up to the period of absence. As I explained in the video, Five Reasons the Narcissist Leaves You, there are five primary reasons which bring about your disengagement. If you can ascertain that one of those triggers has occurred, admittedly it isn't always obvious, and if you're unsure, consult with me and I'll help you, prior to the period of silence, then you will have a better idea of whether you have been disengaged from or whether it is a silent treatment. So, for example, if you have learned that we're being seen around town with somebody new and you've not heard from us, you'll be dealing with disengagement. If you know that you've caused massive exposure of the narcissist's behaviours to other people, therefore causing massive wounding, it's likely, therefore, you'll have been disengaged from. Accordingly, if you have worked us out and reduced your fuel provision considerably while still remaining in the relationship, or realised that there is a new primary source, or become broken and numb so you're not functioning, or cause a major exposure of our behaviour, or intentionally wounded us through repeated behaviours which amount to wounding, then these are reasons for you to be disengaged from. We will more often use the silent treatment against you, but the two key determinants with regard to disengagement are, are you able to get in touch with us and have consideration for what happened between you and the narcissist prior to the institution of the silent treatment or suspected disengagement. Analysis of those two will aid you in understanding what has actually happened to you. Remember, in some instances, an intimate partner secondary source, you can be placed on the shelf, and that's not disengagement. And of course, if your text messages are still going through, if you can ring and you hear a ringtone that you can call up, at our house and somebody explains that we're not available then you're still able to get through to us and therefore you've been placed on the shelf and you've not been disengaged from invariably with secondary sources there if you are being ignored but you can get through that's a silent treatment if you can get through and you receive a slight response for instance, a comfort crumb, you're just on the shelf and you're not being devalued and you're not being disengaged from. And it is unusual for us to disengage from secondary sources, but if you as a secondary source find yourself blocked and you recognise some of the disengagement triggers that have been mentioned, then it is disengagement. It is often quite difficult to ascertain because your emotional thinking clouds and gets in the way. It's also important to realise that the cessation of communications is across everything. So if the narcissist blocks you, say, on um, Instagram 
but you're still able to telephone the narcissist, that's not disengagement. You are just receiving a selective silent treatment across one form of media. That's often done with secondary sources as a corrective devaluation. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.